This week, Buffalo rallies the crew oh, good, to pay tribute to a fallen northern legend. That's a pretty big log for me. Plus, the Electra crew races to complete a major mission. There's chunks, there's holes. On an ice runway that's melting fast. Oh, wait. We don't have a lot of braking here, boys. Hang on to your hats, boy. Is it coming down at all, or...? No. Stop. Oh, shit. It was the most dangerous emergency landing in Buffalo Airways history. The right thing here is stuck that we're going to have to declare an emergency. Ray Weaver was returning from a rough ice trip with one landing gear stuck in the well and guided his Lockheed Electra to a violent stop. landing destroyed two engines and a big part of the wing. The entire crew walked away. You I'll meet you here tonight. That's all I'm glad about. But on the brink of retirement, the captain was badly shaken. Her tear plane. It's just... <sighs> Not to be done. Buffalo raced to get its backup Electra ready to work. Good. Keep coming in straight. And today, the ice strip job goes on. We got our second trip to Goose today, and our uh, 42nd trip in total, so we're about a third of the way if we want to do everything, so got to get her going. Yep, number four is clear. Buffalo needs to get in as many deliveries as possible before the ice gets too dangerous. 102, two clear, take off 1635, eight in here, thank you. Ray, fellow Captain Sean Barry, and engineer Luby Lubosch are running out of time. 80, 81. The lake with the strip is thawing fast. We gotta really rush against the clock here because every day is one less day we're gonna have that ice strip. Gradually go down to 1100 feet. Let's the camp site. And it was like uh, Buffalo 1009 is uh, eight miles back. We're gonna be in our right base for runway 14. Well, it looks pretty good. I don't know what it's gonna feel like, but probably the same. Yeah, well. Looks can be deceiving. The temperatures spiked over the last few days. Gear down, lightning chicks. And gears on away. And slamming down 100,000 pounds of plane and cargo onto a frozen lake demands a rock-solid slab of ice. 200. Landing. I think we're going to land in the middle here with the, what I see. Uh, I know what we got. 30. 20. Six on. Whoa, what was oh, that? Oh, oh. Rodeo. Seems to be okay. Yeah. Okay, we're down at 54. So, yeah, there's part of a crack there. You can see there's a slight crack, I guess. Yeah, there's yeah. some shit that's poked up. There's a couple of holes in it. Uh, and like oh, I said, yeah, there you go. With the lake ice decaying fast. Oh, we better go have a look at this. Ray has to think hard about how much longer he'll be willing to land here. You see that the you know, the ice surface is showing through here, and the cracks are all, like there's one here and then there's another one over there. Yeah. Ray has a decision ahead, but for Sean, today's flight is the end. Very possible this is the last time that the 
controls of the electric. And you like it all. <laughs> With all the events that have happened in the last month, uh, I feel the responsibility of being captain here a little bit too much for me at this time. Been with Buffalo seven years, nine months, and six days. <laughs> and how many minutes? <laughs> Sean's going to work for another airline. He's had his fill of Buffalo's rough brand of flying, and it's only going to get rougher for Ray and the rest of the crew. Yeah, go ahead from Bird Dog 3. You are clear to the Red Deer Airport. Joe and Mikey McBrien roll into Red Deer, Alberta, in Buffalo's Beechcraft Baron, and they're on an international mission. See, I wish my dad would bring me places in one of these. <laughs> That's arriving in style. Hey, it's Hi, it's good to see you. The McBrien's are here to help build a European amusement park. So it's, you know, any anything that gives it an idea of, of planes and... <laughs> Heidi Rasmussen has come to Buffalo's Red Deer Hangar from the Legoland theme park in Billund, Denmark, where Buffalo is about to become part of the show. Buffalo is a major inspiration for the park's newest addition, an Arctic-themed ride and exhibit. Everything about Legoland is supposed to be magical, so we're thinking, where are we going to find magic? Right, okay, yeah, so I should take a picture of something like that. Yeah. Nothing says northern aviation like Buffalo, and Heidi wants some genuine pieces for her display. Yeah, yeah. very interesting. Sure. Yeah, something like this, yeah. And when it comes to finding spare parts, these are DC-4 engine build-ups here. Red Deer is a junkyard paradise. I'll show you around. Yep. This is just amazing. Yeah. So, like, in 1940, this would have been, like, a high piece of technology, but oh, and today, you know, that's like a microchip. So it's like, amazing. honey, honey, we shrunk the kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cock with door out of something. See, everyone in World War II is a little bit smaller. I need some more coffee. Coffee! That's cool. They're very cool. I like those. Excellent. Oh, there's just so many excellent things. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, my God. I love it. Oh, those are more than cool. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I want that for myself. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, look, it's got a tray on it. This is, like, very retro. This is very hot. This is the best shopping trip I've been on all year. Oh. But once Buffalo Joe gets into the giving spirit, radar down. the avalanche of parts and pieces becomes almost too much to handle. Oh, what's that one? There's an accessory counter that looks nice. But these things here, they're, they're shelf life. Yeah. We got a five year life, and I think they're born 53. <laughs> Here's another instrument for right. you the separator, which is really nothing. It's just a, okay. you can have it. My father surprised me today, all the stuff that he's given away because, you know, he's a hoarder. So it's amazing that, uh, you know, he's he given away such uh, cool things. <laughs> Better that, uh, you know, gets a second life sitting in Legoland where a bunch of kids can actually enjoy aviation. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay. All right. He's probably got all now. I got so much more room to go get some more stuff. So he's probably all collecting right now to fill up the, fill the gap. Next stop, Denmark, I guess, eh? I'm thrilled. Two days later, Joe and Mikey are back in Yellowknife, getting an update on the ice strip from Ray. I really didn't like that strip yesterday. Why? There's chunks and there's holes, and this crack is starting to open up again. It's starting to show. We've been beating the hell out of the airplane. And on the landing roll, we hit a wicked ripple there that I think must have got the nose roll right off the hey, ground. Ray and my father usually don't see it eye to eye. They are on different ends of the pilot spectrum. Ray is always about making sure everything is perfect, uh, where my father is all about get it done now. Yo, just at what point you shouldn't be going in there with this kind of an airplane with that kind of load is kind of hard to judge, but you don't want to be wrong. How come there's not a whole bunch of things that we can do? How come Actually, everything is can do? We took all the cans. None of the settlements in the Arctic or in the north would ever get their product to their stores or fuel to their camps. It's all canned. 
So Joe's bringing in another electric captain, one who sees things a lot like he does. Brian's awesome. I love when Brian shows up because he gets the job done. Brian Harrison is a freelancer that Joe relies on when conditions turn ugly. They're bringing me up so they can keep the airplane moving as much as they can between now and breakup. I tend to operate the airplane a little different than Ray does. We have different views on a few things. He may be a little bit more cowboyish than, than Ray, but sometimes when you're fighting, uh, you know, Mother Nature, it, it takes a cowboy to get the job done. But Mother Nature will soon show that she's got this cowboy outgunned. be my last flight on the electric for Buffalo and possibly my last flight. I've been waiting for this for quite a while. Ray Weber has been flying for 50 years, the last five in a Buffalo cockpit. I was driving by Buffalo one day and saw the electric part out the front. So I went in and talked to Arnie. He was the chief pilot. They said, when can you start? And here we are. In August, it'll be the end of my 50th year flying airplanes. So I think it's time to quit. Today's electric flight to the ice strip is Ray Swansong. Hopefully the flight goes well. The weather looks not too bad. Good morning. Good morning. Last day. Right. We're ready for one more. Last day. <laughs> Ray's not taking off without a personal inspection. Rough ice is about to batter his landing gear, especially with the sun beating down for the past three days. Just because it's the last day doesn't mean it's going to go smooth. Okay, what's your name? Well, I'm just doing a preliminary here. <laughs> I always went in there and had a look anyway. When that little adventure with the gear there was really a, an eye opener. Obviously, we didn't notice it when we should have. Okay, that right? I don't want you to break your freaking legs on your last day there. Anytime you like, Luby, start number four, please. Today, Ray will fly with Brian, giving him his first look at the ice before Brian takes over the job, which has turned into a race. Clear to take off. Everybody's ready? Ready. Off the ramp. Rotate. Right here up. Evan, it's under Buffalo 1003 with you off 16 out of 1300 feet. While Ray's looking forward to rest and relaxation. <laughs> Brian, you need another cookie? No, I'm fine. Thanks, Ray. The job is the only thing on Brian's mind. When I'm up here, I like to work. I like to get as many trips done as I can because it all equates to money. The more you fly here, the more you get paid. And that's what it's all about. It's less than an hour until the Goose Lake Strip comes into view. And it'll be slightly on your left. And I'm not sure whether what I'm looking at right now is the camp. The There's that block stuff right in front of us. Go ahead, we're yeah. We're about three minutes back. We're going to do uh, an orbit uh, just to check your runway and uh, get some orientation. We have a new crew on board. All right, sounds good. Okay, flap 78. Flaps are coming down. This is getting darker. The, the sun and the wind is taking the snow off. Yeah. yeah, once it gets a little bit of black, it doesn't take very long. The thin layer of hard packed snow is their only source of traction. Without it, stopping is going to be a major problem. Let's see, look, see the water? Yep. You know, the flood water? Yep. Yeah, it looks like you would want to be on the edge of this trip right now. Here's on the way. But Brian can't be swayed. It actually looks fairly reasonable. Yeah, well, wait till you get your wheels on it. 200. Just dig your lumps of land in the middle, Brian, because we don't really know what that trip is like. Between the cracks and the bare ice, this landing is going to hurt. 14, 13, 20, 10. Oh, 
Get the plane slowed down, just in time. Hey, Buffalo 1003, you on it, uh, 1818. I'm not very impressed with this runway. The two veteran captains need to see exactly what they're facing here. I'm gonna have to try and get some snow onto this stuff or we're gonna end up in trouble here. The big problem right now is those large patches of exposed ice. Here, not because this is gonna, yeah, this will, uh, this, this is gonna start. go fast. On the instant that the sun starts reflecting off of that ice, it starts creating heat and more heat and more heat. It'll sublimate. Yeah. Even Brian is starting to get cold feet. My major concern is, is maneuvering and stopping at slower speeds to uh, sliding off the end of the runway into a snowbank. Advisory Goose Lake is Buffalo 1003, Lockheed Electric, Martin Runway 14. Everybody's ready or off the ground? Sure. As they head for home, there's no denying the fact that this runway is running out of time. We're okay. On the tarmac in Yellowknife, airport crews are setting up to honor Ray's final Electra mission. It's tradition that when a pilot retires, they bring the plane in and then the fire trucks spray water over. You know, we may have to do a little bit of spraying with this stuff afterwards. We'll see what kind of mood Ray's in. 30, 20, 10. Laps up the natural landing. <laughs> they did get the damn fire trucks out. <laughs> well, we want her washed anyway. Oh. Look at the wipers on. Oh, look at the crowd there. <laughs> yeah, good. Thing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ray. You must have washed your plane, eh? Yeah, well, I was thinking it needed it. <laughs> Looks like spring. Burnt beer. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, a waste of good wine. Yeah, I didn't need it. <laughs> I'll enjoy some of your wine. <laughs> Ray's work on the Electra and the ice strip is over. I needed that. <laughs> You better have a shot here, too, right? <laughs> but Brian's challenge is just beginning. <laughs> Thank you. The temperature's been on the rise in Yellowknife. I love this shit. And Buffalo's been racing to make as many trips as possible to the decaying strip at Goose Lake. Hold on, new one. This morning, mechanic Adam Smith finishes off a last minute adjustment to the Electra's brakes. I opened the brake system up, and so I introduced a bunch of air into it, so now I'm bleeding it. I think that's good. And the Electra's brakes will be more important today than they've ever been. Today, Buffalo's cowboy captain is going to find out how far he's really willing to go. This time of the year is when you have to be extremely careful because the snow dissipates and the wind basically polishes the ice and then you have no braking action and uh, you can get yourself in trouble. Hey, 
at the strip there. Oh, there it is, sir. As Brian and co-pilot A.J. DeCoast close in on Goose Lake, it's clear that even perfectly working brakes won't be enough. Yeah, it's getting pretty shiny. It is, for sure, yeah. Is it ever? We're landing at uh, almost 100,000 pounds, and we're approaching the runway at almost the cruise speed of the C-46. With braking action uh, not that good, consequently you need more runway, and uh, it just wasn't there. We have a duty reverse. The minute the wheels touch down, Brian will have to reverse the angle of his propeller blades, directing the air blast forward at full power to try and slow and stop the Electra before it runs out of strip. But even then, there's no guarantee the wheels will grip the ice or the plane will stop in time. If anything does happen to the airplane, uh, if you can't get it out of there immediately, uh, you're going to lose your airplane. It's going to sink to the bottom of the lake, and you don't want to see that. 200. 30, 20, 10. It's even worse than Brian feared. Oh, he kicks into reverse, but he can barely keep the plane straight. 60. Oh. Oh, those wheels are just good. Yeah, no one turn it. Eh? Oh. We don't have a lot of break in here, boys. Buffalo 1002 down clear. There's no denying just how bad this ice really is. I'm not so sure I like this anymore. It's way worse than it was yesterday. Yeah, those hops are getting more. All right, good. Oh, I'm going to have a look at the runway here. It's pretty slippery, and I, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about it. Yeah, this is, this is not good. I mean, you, you look here, and we're basically on glare ice. It's, it's like a, it's like a not very well uh, maintained curling rink. And if we give it 24 more hours, there's going to be absolutely no snow on it. At the risk of being called a chicken, I ain't coming back. <laughs> Buffalo hates to leave a job unfinished, but Brian knows when he's beaten. I mean, it's a tough call to make when there's a lot of work there to do, but I don't want to run the airplane off the runway. Exactly. Uh... With one final bumpy ride over the ice strip, oh, oh this mission is officially over. I think she's too slippery for the Rocky Electra, my friend. Yeah. It's late afternoon on the Buffalo Airways ramp, and the crew is gearing up for an unexpected mission, one that's come as a painful surprise. Well, I guess we'll go pick up Arnie and bring him home, eh? Yesterday morning, Buffalo's former cargo manager, Kelly Jurasevich, got some devastating news. It was Saturday morning, and my phone was ringing. It was really early. My cell phone, and I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Nobody phones my cell phone that early. So I looked at it, and it said, Arnie Schrader. And I thought, oh, my buddy's phoning me. That's when I got the news that Ernie had passed away. Her best friend, Buffalo's former chief pilot, Arnie Schrader, had lost his battle with cancer. <laughs> it was just two years ago that Arnie hung up his headset and retired to Kelowna, British Columbia. A retirement cut short. Well, thanks, guys. Now, he's going to get the kind of final send-off that only Buffalo can deliver. 
You know, the whole reason Arnie was up here is to fly a DC-3 for us, and you know, it's only fitting that uh, his last ride will be in a DC-3. Lynn and I are going down, and we're all flying back together to bring him up here, and Arnie's ashes will be spread up here. This is his home. And tomorrow morning, they're going to bring him home in style. morning on the Yellowknife runway in time to pick up an old friend. You're up. Go get Arnie. You bet. Buffalo is heading to Kelowna, BC, where Arnie Schrader retired, to take him on his final trip. You know, for me, it was, uh, it was really important. I wanted to be the one uh, to go in and pick him up and, and the family and uh, bring him home. It's, uh, it's not going to be the same, that's for sure, without Arnie. It's a tough one to take. It. It's, uh, it's a pretty big loss for me, that's for sure. Arnie and Justin were two very similar people uh, that worked really well with each other. Um, Father-son figure type. Arnie taught Justin more than he taught anyone else. We all know that. He has that little boy under his wing and always did. And I'll tell you what, that's why he's the most incredible pilot you'll ever see, ever meet. And he became chief pilot and look at his age. What do you think that came from? Arnie. I don't know where he is. Justin and Arnie had their most epic trip together three years ago, flying a CL-215 water bomber across the Atlantic en route to Turkey. Uh, Justin and I have flown along together lots, so it's it's... It's just natural for us. Over the middle of the ocean, they cross directly above Pico Island in the Azores and the Pico Volcano, the most amazing site of their trip. Getting a little bumpy here. Yep. Well, I thought it was pretty cool. Big volcano. Yeah. It's kind of neat. You look down, there's a big lake in the middle. Pretty scenic. Landing on the European mainland in Portugal, was a huge moment. It was the highlight of Justin's years as Arnie's student. Here, I'll take a picture. You got the right button? Yeah. So we were on the most eastern part of Canada, North America. Now we're in the most western part of Europe. He took a liking to me and uh, kind of took me under his wing. I, I don't think it's really sunk in. It's only been a couple of days. It takes, it takes time. When you're young, your family's a long ways away, and, uh, and you know, Buffalo turns into your family. Hardy and I were, were, were very close. He was one of my best friends, and I'll, uh, I'll miss him for a long, long time. At Kelowna's airport. Okay, everybody smile. <laughs> friends and family have been waiting for the DC-3. Have a good trip. Yeah, so good to see you again. Take care of yourself. Eh? We're taking Dad home today. His final, his wishes were to um, have his ashes spread around Yellowknife and stay there. So we're going to take him home. Yep, taking Ernie home in this is, I think, an honor. Take off runway 16. Let it go 16, Memorial 1. Rotate. Positive rate, zero. Justin offers the captain seat to Arnie. Juan just said they got the headset on Arnie up front, so he's flying us now. <laughs> so it even gets better. 
It's only fitting that Arnie makes his last flight in this cockpit. He flew virtually every plane in Buffalo's fleet, but the three was where he pulled off some of his greatest exploits. Like when Arnie had to make a call about landing the three on an untested sand runway. The dangers are they could be too soft, they could be washed out, they haven't been used. If the strip was too soft, the three would have skidded right out of control. But with the runway's owner looking on, Arnie took his shot. That's going to be a classic. Thanks a lot, Arnie. You I betcha. can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Okay, well, this we is enjoyed it. Job well done. As Arnie's homecoming flight closes in on Yellowknife, there's a question about what's going to happen when they get there. I don't know if Buffalo Joe's either or not. I just hope he is. I really want him to honor his friend. I think it's important to Arnie. Joe offered up the DC-3 and crew, but he usually avoids crowds. My father doesn't do too well in social situations. He doesn't really like to socialize. So Joe might be grieving in private. I just hope he's there and realizes what Arnie meant to Buffalo and to the world. Arnie Schrader's made his return to Yellowknife, where there's a tribute ready on the ramp. I guess it was a long flight for the boys, but Arnie's back home, so that's an important thing. And hope everyone had a good flight. It was an amazing trip, like an incredible trip with Arnie. It was so incredible. But Kelly's still hoping Joe will be on hand, even though the last time she saw him, there was a massive blow up between them, ending Kelly's job at Buffalo. I get off the plane and I was leery about seeing Buffalo Joe. And then Arnie's daughter wanted to go around the corner, so I took her around the terminal. I know my, I know I'm going. And, uh... Buffalo Joe came out, and I just looked at him. And he looked, and he, Buffalo Joe gave me a great big hug. It was awesome. Today, the bad blood is all forgotten. No, we're okay. How are you doing? Were we on that plate? Yeah, it was awesome, Joe. It was absolutely awesome. And Joe wanted to be here for Arnie's VIP homecoming. I've been on airports a long time, and I never did like seeing people come out of the belly of an airplane in a box. I'd rather they came home in style, like a statesman. Here, for Jesus Christ, we need one more for there. How's that? Way better. Love you. Thanks, Joe. That was really good to see Joe. Inside, the hangar is being transformed into a chapel. Okay, then the red and the urn. Yeah. Great. Thanks a million. Buffalo Airways uh, wasn't his home for his whole life, but the latter part of his career was spent here in the hangar, and uh, it was a fitting place to have his uh, final memorial. Now, I think this is the nicest I've seen the hangar. We've had memorials in the past, but this one's a little bit different because it's really someone that's uh, really close. We put Ernie in there and put a pair of glasses on him and the uh, earphones and strapped him in the left seat. Brian flew in the right seat. <laughs> well, usually Ernie was trying to piss out the window. Did you try that too? <laughs> yeah, but there wasn't enough left in those ashes. <laughs>
That was, that was his big trick. Yep. Carney's the same age I am. I think he's a couple months older. Depends who lied the most. It's very sad to see him go, but I see maybe other people who didn't have the 40, 50 years of good flying that we had. And those are the ones I really feel bad for. The era of great bush pilots like Joe and Arnie might be fading away, but they got the chance to relive it together when they landed the DC-3 on skis for the first time in a decade. Hi, skis down. It was kind of neat to fly with each other. Like two old guys trying out a new sports car, we just want to see what, what it would do if we could still do it. They wouldn't know until the skis hit the ice. It was just fun to go out there and play with it a little bit, you know? Now, there's one fewer true bush pilot left in the north. But Arnie went out with a bang. His last job for Buffalo was one of his most legendary. I got a phone call. Uh, this guy uh, had a British accent, and he asked me a question. I really never had an answer for him. Uh, I wrote down what he wanted. And I came out the hangar, and uh, Arnie was standing just right here. <sighs> Sorry. And I asked Arnie, do you think we can do this? He said, yeah, let's do it. And uh, about eight months later, I found myself on the side of a hill in Mackenzie, BC, watching this airplane come in really low. A documentary crew wanted to recreate the famed World War II dam-busting bomber raids. The guys in England knew there was this company in Yellowknife somewhere in Canada that uh, could be up to the task, and it really wasn't the company. It was the person, and the person was Arnie. There's one guy in the world to make it happen is this guy, right? We're gonna roll. Yep. It would require low-level flying and incredible precision to drop the spinning prop bomb exactly on target. I just did it by eyeball. The altimeter that we have in the airplane is not much better than what they had in 1943. Holy man, that's crazy! I didn't know until Mike knew was hollering on the radio that I hit it right in the center. Oh, Arnie, right in the middle. Arnie, you're my hero. <laughs> right on, Saigon. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, Arnie smoked that dam right in the middle. And uh, probably one of the greatest moments of my life watching that. It's not so much remembering what Arnie did, but what we could do with what Arnie taught us. What he passed on to Justin and myself is that you can do anything. And if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. I didn't know quite what to say. I didn't think I'd get too choked up, but, you know, man, just, uh, I miss the guy, and, uh, thanks. Aviation has become such a sterile uh, industry. There's no real room for the cowboys anymore. Um, but lucky enough, there's a place up here that uh, uh, caters to the cowboys in the world. First Air C-130 Hercules leads an airborne tribute in the sky over Yellowknife. The local airlines are saying goodbye to Arnie Schrader. Arnie's flyby was great. I was extremely happy. All the aircrafts, it was incredible. We all loved and respected Arnie. He was a hell of a pilot. A flyby for a fallen pilot is a sign of respect. 
And bringing up the rear, Buffalo's C-46, a plane that Arnie flew hundreds of times, manned by two young pilots that he himself trained. It was a rush and my heartbeat was pounding in the plane. Today, there's just one more flight to make. Arnie's friends and family gather at a local landmark. Pilots Monument is the unofficial center of aviation in the north, and it was just fitting that Pilots Monument would be Arnie's final resting spot. Two of Arnie's old pilot buddies will scatter his ashes from the air. But Arnie's legacy will remain long after his ashes float away. He left a lot with Justin, he left a lot with AJ and the rest of the pilots, so they can all pass it on. You have control. I have control. Before you ever sat in the seat beside him, he had you figured out. He was straight, a little bit of back pressure, slight or to the right, you got her. He knew where your head was at, what you were thinking, and he knew how to deal with people. Just relax a little bit. Look at your instrument and scan them in. Down. He taught us lots of things about just pure flying. Push the stick ahead. I won't soon forget that. I won't soon forget Arnie. It's like this and your sister all do it. Want to lower your nose a little bit? There. Okay. Left to come. Oh. Pull back on it. Now step on it. <laughs> a lot of them are just like sons, you know. Oh yeah, you get very, very close to it, man. Was it good for you, Ethan? Oh, yeah, it was good for me. <laughs> yeah, Arnie was a father figure to all of us, you know, all of us guys that came through, and uh, you never stop learning from the guy ever. Arnie Schrader's legacy is extremely huge. It's massive. Arnie was a natural in you know, all airplanes, any airplane. And uh, as an instructor and, and a teacher, he had a wonderful feel for an airplane. I don't think you'll see that in your life again. The things that he taught some of us guys that we go and teach the next generation, that's how it's done, that's how it's passed on. The book Arnie doesn't close, it's not over. We're still doing what he taught us to do. And that's what I wanted to, for everyone to know. Hang on to your hands, boy.